performing tonight on the Expressions Classical Series, the Dave Egger Quartet. doing a really interesting program today of uh, three very, very famous, very classic string quartets. One of the last quartets of Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, the Ravel String Quartet in F major, and the first movement of Debussy's G minor quartet. These three pieces represent in a lot of ways three of the biggest sort of pillars of the string quartet literature. The Mozart piece was written in a cluster of pieces that uh, Mozart wrote in the last three years of his life, actually commissioned by the Prussian king, who was a not very good cellist. And Mozart himself actually hated the cello. He did not like the cello. He, most of the cellists that he worked with in Austria were not very good. And he decided in most of his pieces to write fairly simple cello parts. But the Prussian king requested a quartet that featured the cello. And so this particular piece has a lot of very, very beautiful melodies for cello.
Everything is free in music, it's not that interesting. What's fun is when you control different parameters. So in the classical, you're not improvising with notes and rhythms, but then you can be very, very free with like phrasing, delivery, texture, timbre. A person who taught me a lot about classical music was uh, this guy Max Mendel who played in my old quartet Flux, because he, he was such a great chamber music player because I really felt like every time he'd play a phrase, it was so present in that moment. And, and especially with a composer like Mozart, which is devil, fiendishly difficult. Mozart sounds very simple, but it's like this bizarre house of like, cards that if one thing moves, the entire thing collapses. And so when you're a young player, you get very nervous about Mozart because you're like, oh my god, it's starting to feel out of control and we're falling apart. And then as you get more experience, suddenly you're like, wow, there's this give and take and this breathe. Um, that's how I like to see it, because a lot of my friends who are jazz string players, and I think I'm seen as a jazz string player a lot. They're kind of like, why is it fun for you to play Beethoven and Mozart? You don't get to express yourself. I'm like, I really, really do, because you have this amazing text in front of you, and it's as creative as you want to make it. You know, and if you, you have so much power to make it like, like ridiculously creative. And so in a way, the limit limitations actually, in some ways, result in more creativity.
one of the things that's so fun about playing in the string quartet is it's a little bit like playing basketball. When you play piano, and I, I play piano also, you're kind of like completing the whole musical picture. Like with this hand, you're playing the melody, and with this hand, you might be accompanying or playing rhythm. But the thing about the string quartet is that each member of the string quartet has his or her own role. And so that you're incredibly mutually interdependent in order to create a full piece of music. I was in a quartet for 10 years called Flux, which is a professional contemporary music quartet, and I was so struck with how if one guy was moody, the whole feeling of the thing would just turn on its side in a way that didn't really happen with rock bands because there wasn't as much of an interdependence. So I feel like all three of these pieces have a very athletic and powerful interdynamic of the four players and they're like plays in a sense with characters that come in and out and I feel like each of them deals with the way that the characters talk to each other in very very different ways. Ravel Quartet is an incredibly beautiful piece that has become one of the most played pieces in the classical repertoire. However, it was a huge flop when it came out. Uh, Ravel wrote the piece in 1903 and it was his last submission to the Conservatory of Paris for the Prix de Rome. He had tried and failed many times. No one liked Ravel, which is kind of sad because he's so brilliant. And he wrote this piece and people said horrible things about it. Faure said that it was like academic and inexpressive and bad. And it ultimately it led to his sort of expulsion from the conservatory basically at the whole environment there. But Debussy didn't feel that way. And Debussy actually wrote a letter to Ravel the year after that it, it was written saying, he said, it was a very dramatic letter, he said, in the name of the gods of music, do not change one note of your piece. He, because he, he really, really felt something powerful. Now, Ravel's quartet was very, very heavily influenced by the Basque region that he's from, which is, he was born on the border of France and Spain. Like, he pulled together, like, flamenco music, gypsy music, and classical music, and he did it in a way that created this sort of really, really effortless flow. And there's very, very few composers like that. And I think as you listen to the first movement of the Ravel today, you're going to hear that it really functions as almost one song, one line that takes you all the way through.
One of the hardest things about classical music is that you can't change what's on the page. And when I was a young player, I loved to improvise. And, and that always felt very restrictive to me. I was like, why do I have to play this when I hear something else? But one of the things as an adult that I love about it is that there's a real powerful emotional challenge of sort of reading ahead, of looking ahead, and sort of seeing what that person's doing. It's like being in a play. I was like, well, she's, I bet she's going to do that line, and this time she's going to yell at me. So I'm going to do this. Or wow, she got really quiet. So you know what, I'm going to... It's, it's difficult because it's very technically challenging music, you know? So your range of freedom is not perhaps as much as jazz because there's a lot physically that we're doing to create the sound. So you can't necessarily be in the sound as much. But I feel that that interaction is what makes every performance very, very different. And different classical musicians are very different. Some are very stoic, as you suggest, and you just go and you play the part. But that's not the fun ones. I mean, the fun ones are when you really don't know what's going to happen. The Debussy Quartet was written in 1893. And it's a very, very powerful work in that it fuses aspects of many kinds of music in a lot of ways Debussy and Ravel was the first sort of world music movement in Europe. They were, they were tired of the overbearing quality that Germany had on French music, and they were sort of reaching to Africa, they were reaching to Asia, and they were saying, how can we find these rhythms and these different kinds of patterns that will change up our music? And so the Debussy Quartet is considered, content-wise and structurally, a huge departure from the history of the String Quartet. In fact, um, Bartok and many of his contemporaries cited that piece as the piece that shattered classical structure because the melodies start with the initial sort of this sort of bum ba da 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 this initial sort of flamenco thing carries through the entirety of the whole work, which really wasn't the case for the classical string quartet. The, the classical string quartet has been the sort of the most purest of forms compositionally. It's been the thing where people, it's like the minuet is this movement, and the adagio is this kind of movement, and the sonata allegro is this kind of movement, rondo is this, and for somebody to say, no, 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 forget all that, I'm just gonna tell a story from beginning to end, and it's not even gonna have a recapitulation. It's like, oh my gosh. So the Debussy is a very powerful, very energetic piece, and it also uses a lot of really beautiful coloration. <laughs>
Thank you.